everyone. The introductory rites of the Mass begin when the people stand after the bell is rung and they finish when they sit down before the readings. Now the purpose of these rites is to ensure that the faithful establish communion as God's family and dispose themselves to listen carefully to God's word and celebrate the Eucharist with devotion. Now on Sundays everyone usually sings an opening hymn. It should be such that everyone is able, in some degree, to join in. Its purpose is to open the celebration, foster the unity of those present, introduce their thoughts to the liturgical season in hand or feast being celebrated, and to accompany the entrance procession, if there is one. The opening hymn replaces a one-sentence antiphon to be found in the Missal for the Mass of the Day. So much the better if the choir can sing the antiphon and repeat it as long as the procession lasts. Now this antiphon is usually in the form of a psalm. The ringing of the bell at the beginning of Mass is the signal for the people to stand, not for the music to start up. Rushed liturgy is Poor liturgy. On Sundays, the procession consisting of thurifer, cross bearer, candle bearers, readers, one carrying the book of the gospel, and priest moves up the centre aisle of the church and unhurried. The reader who carries up the book of the gospel places it reverently on the centre of the altar and bows before it. After the priest venerates the altar, he may incense it before going to the presidential chair to begin Mass. If, after three or four verses of a hymn, the priest is at his post, ready to begin Mass, there's no need to go on singing all those extra verses holding up the Mass. It's far more important to sing the Mass rather than sing at Mass. Hymns are not part of the Mass proper, but added extras. They generally accompany processions, for instance, entry, offertory, communion and exit, and they are not sung for their own sake, just because we like singing. Congregations too reliant on the four hymns sandwich are not doing themselves any favours at all. Overly loud organ musing can sometimes inhibit congregational singing. The music ministry, like all ministries, operates on behalf of the congregation, <coughs> excuse me, helping them to lift up their hearts in prayer and worship. Solo organ artists are for the concert hall. The priest makes the sign of the cross while carrying, saying or singing the appropriate words, after which the people respond by saying or singing Amen. Amen is borrowed from the Hebrew language. The priest then has a choice of three greetings to use, and the response to these is, ch is changed in the revised translation. Now when the priest says, The Lord be with you, the congregation responds with, and with your spirit. It is easy to think that this exchange is just a formal way for the priest and people to say hello to each other, but there is more to it than that. The words are intended as a prayer as much as a greeting. They are said at five pivotal times during the Mass, and if they were meant to say hello everyone, they would not need to be repeated like this. Ordained ministers are the Lord's anointed and they have re received special gifts in ordination which they use to serve God's people, especially in the liturgy. There they represent Christ, mere mortals though they be. The people's response is, and with your spirit, and it's especially referring to this. When the priest greets the people with the Lord be with you or another similar greeting, he is affirming them both as God's holy people and the body of Christ, not just a crowd of people who haphazardly show up for Sunday Mass. 
Both the greeting and reply are rooted firmly in the Bible. The Lord be with you, for instance, is found in Judges 6.12, Ruth 2.4, Chronicles 15.2 and Luke 1.28. And with your spirit is found in 2 Timothy 4.22, Galatians 16.18, Philippines 4.23 and Philemon 25. Casual and personalised greetings like Good morning everyone and welcome to St Vincent's Parish which emphasise a merely human exchange and obscures the mystery of Christ's presence and actions they are somewhat inappropriate. At Mass the people have come from a secular environment to a sacred building consecrated for divine worship so liturgical language should reflect this. When people come to church for Mass, they expect it to be a place of reverence and quiet, conducive to prayer, not mayhem. Those assigned for the ministry of welcome should briefly greet people as they enter the church, but not engage certain friends of theirs in extended conversation about this and that. People can talk all they want over a cup of tea after Mass in the hall, now, it's really lovely to see children of all ages at Mass, but what happens when an infant has a bad morning, becomes very unsettled, and there is no let-up at all? Most parents, in my view, adopt a common-sense approach and instinctively know what to do. Mass is not an endurance test. Now, after the greeting, the priest may introduce the Mass with a few brief but well-chosen words, this helps to focus people's minds on the theme of the Mass being celebrated. However, by coming out with too much banter at this point, the celebrant could unwittingly draw too much attention to himself, causing distractions and putting the people in the wrong frame of mind for listening to the Word of God, which is really the only word which matters. The same applies to the priest opening the Mass with a mini homily, which is not uncommon, but it's definitely out of place. Now there are three options for the Penitential Act. They are in the form of three acclamations concluding with Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, which everyone repeats after the priest. Now, after the acclamations, the priest should observe a slight pause before he comes in with, Lord, have mercy. Priests have the option, or the, at least they used to have the option, of substituting the English words, Lord, have mercy, with the original Greek texts, texts Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. The priest is also permitted to replace acclamations with appropriate ones of his own. Impoverished acclamations, however, should focus on the redeeming action of Christ rather than on personal sinfulness. The Kyrie is by nature a chant and is normally sung by all the people with a choir or cantor or priest having a part to play. Another popular form of penitential act is the prayer known by its Latin title the Confitior. It begins with, I confess to Almighty God. There are a couple of changes in the revised translation. The present words, sinned through my own fault, is changed to greatly sinned. And after we say the words, what I have failed to do, we will add while striking our breast, through my fault, through my fault and through my most grievous fault. It's not that we are a lot more sinful now than we used to be, but the guiding principle is a closer adherence to the Latin, not a critique of our virtue or lack of it. The revision translation or the revised translation does have, a, have us express more humbly the seriousness of our sins and the sincerity of our contrition. Greatly sinned, 
for instance, is an allusion to 1 Chronicles 21.8, where David, after falling from grace, prayed, I have greatly sinned. The confitier is followed, as always, by Lord have mercy. Now the priest concludes the penitential act with an absolution, though it is not to be confused with the one he gives in the sacrament of penance. We sing or recite the Gloria on all Sundays of the year, except during Advent and Lent. It is also said or sung on other feast days. Everyone may sing or recite the Gloria together, or if sung, the people can alternate with the choir, or the choir may sing it alone. It may be intoned by the priest, cantor, or choir. The words of this ancient hymn going back to the 5th century may not be altered or replaced by a text which is at variance from that in the Missal. Now in the years following Vatican II, Lots of parishes took liberties in this regard and the liturgy suffered as a result. The collect completes the introductory rites. It may be sung or said. After the priest says, let us pray, all observe a brief silence so that they may be conscious of the fact that they are in God's presence and call their own petitions to mind. The collet expresses the character of the celebration and prepares the congregation to listen to God's word. Thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh, oh.